for a second there, but it will just be the Tristana for Fofo. Well, this is why I was wondering whether OMG would stay on blue side and first pick that to start away. It's a really valuable pick for Fofo to add him to um, out, out push the mages that come out of Angel early. Um, you can still go for something like the Talir in the mid lane of Angel, which, which is still fine with Tristana, but if you mess up, the Tristana can kill you. But on the other side now, with that Rakan now being left off the ban list, PV Gok, also another fantastic player off his champion, maybe opens the Zaya Rakan angle for Abel and PP Gok. And this is potentially quite good of an angle for OMG, because staying over on D, they're not necessarily good at crushing towards bot lane. Can play something, you know, this goes to Kaiser again, similar kind of conversation. Kaiser Zaya, if they're kept down early, really, really struggle. But against Stay and I Wonder, if you are not lane dominant, you pick up the Rakan and Kaiser of the Zaya, one of the two, you feel like you can get through that early game well, and maybe just outvalue them. It's not the answer which I would have had versus Team WE, I prefer much more interaction than to kind of keep I Wonder from roaming out of that lane, but it is an answer to say, well, if you're not going to prioritize laning phase, we'll get value that. Kaiser Rakan. I can't remember the last time I saw Kaiser Rakan as a R1-2 yeah, <laughs> LPL. Yeah, it feels like a long time since Kaiser was this prioritized. Wow, okay. Wandy, this is his classic pick. He used to be a Jada one trick back in the day before he joined the LPL. We honestly rarely see it from him, though. Like, since those days, we rarely, rarely, rarely see it. But it's locked in, and it's so good against the Rakan. It is. It's also really good versus the Kaiser too, because if Kaiser wants to go in to do the, just the bomb combo, you can just tap R when she's flying into it, and force her out of that play too, or even get an opportunistic huge through that. So, lane dominant for Janna, great ability to outlane the Rakan too, just kind of double tap my view to stop and get the W on top of you. So, good answer here for my Wally, I like that. It is away from the roaming support style, which we have typically played towards, but it is a great denial of the bot lane picks, which oh geez, you did say, you don't see Rakan Kaiser that often as a 1 2. I can't remember seeing that one before. That does answer that very well. Certainly does. 65% win rate over his career on this pick. He's only played it 17 times, which for Janna is a lot of picks. Like, <laughs> I think that's still a lot of Janna picks compared to any other support, but either way. Angel has his Talia banned away. We already talked about his obscene stats on the Talia in game number one. 100% win rate on that pick. Another big one that could be if you're really focusing on specifically Angel, obviously Huey still up on the board. Uh, things like Twisted Fate as well, actually. Yep. Something that Angel was very happy to lean on during the split and also had an incredibly strong win rate at 75%. You also see Galio get a couple of changes coming through into this patch as well. So there's, uh, there's a chance that A team picks that one up. I don't know if you want to be... <laughs> The problem is now, OMG have already committed to we're going in kind of style. I I don't know whether we're going to see something like the Poke Kaiser come out instead and just say, well, you know, we can't dive in now, we've got to play from range. I think that's dangerous against Tristana Maokai because they have a really strong 1-2 item spike which bears away from the Kaiser before that comes online. Yeah, OMG are just saying, look, we're going for melee range, bruiser, diver, melee champions. And is seeing if we can overcome the Janna disengaging. If Janna missteps, she gets one shot. Not a tanky champion, but she does have a lot of ability to stop these champions from getting in range of her. Yeah. Obviously, they've, they've kind of already committed to this identity, and now they just need to see if they can overcome the defense. Stay going for the Zaya. Does make you think maybe I want to will be Rogi on this Janna and just have Stay try to clear the waves on the bottom side? The Zaya versus Kaisa matchup. It's a classic. As now the Gragas locked in as the final pick oh, for Wayward up in that top side this. as well. How do we dive into this team composition? Okay, so let's think about this, right? Uh, Sherpon gets a Q in this theoretical situation. Shrill hit a few Qs this game. As soon as there are level 6s available for the enemies, there is Buster Shop, there is the Rocket Shop, there is Maokai just throwing all the CC at you or CCing his, your team behind you with his ultimate. You have the Gragas cast, you have Janna's everything, you have Zaya ultimate. How... Do you get in melee range of Team WWE's team composition? OMG, this is more than the charge of the Light Brigade. This is just ramming yourself onto the Palisade and just hoping the walls break down. This is this is a very hard draft win for WWE by my eyes. You need to have very early lane wins from OMG. Charpunk can get such a big lead early that this team composition can never get into the point where they can 5v5. That's the only way OMG get into this. It feels like the Siege of Minas Tirith if they didn't have Grond, you know? If Grond wasn't in the picture, they're never getting through that game. You just see the piles of orcs. 
the worry that we could have a pile of OMG branded The age orcs. of Nautilus is over. The time of the Janna <laughs> has come. <laughs> hey, look, Janna and uh, Saruman, not dissimilarly oh, dressed. Um, either way, <laughs> moving on from Lord of the Rings. I don't want to think definitely of Sir Christopher Lee dressed up in that outfit. <laughs> For just $4.99 a no. minute or whatever it is, good lord. Um, <laughs> OMG going for somewhat of a dive composition here. Let's see if they can pull it off. It feels like they are up against it in this draft. WE, very uh, cool, calm and collected is the way that they want to play this game out. And honestly, that feels like the way that they have succeeded across the year. Potentially a second win here for WE if they play it right. Let's talk OMG, because yes, after level six, if WE are, are strong as a team and, and play this composition correctly, it does feel very difficult to outplay it for OMG, but they do have Lee Sin Renekton in the top side. They do have a Kaiser with Halo Blades that can kind of pop off in a game. How do they make this happen, Nymera? Sell me the story oh. of how OMG manages to make this draft work. So in this wonderful magical candy land, um, OMG <laughs> blow a load of summoners very, very early from particularly Stay and Iwandi to make sure that they can't play aggressively. You'll notice that there is the Hail of Blades in Iwandi. Um, this is the first top level play, Jana, that we have seen uh, this year. You know, Iwandi did play a number of games in Velocity. The only player who's played this very early on has been Reckless Wayward immediately going to mid lane, though. <laughs> Look at this. What a way to start the lane. Wayward. Just abandons oh, his own lane up top and sets up Angel so, for failure. Okay, so once again, Wayward very early impact in mid lane. We saw him doing that with the teleport in, in game number two. So, um, big thing here now is that Fofo is going to have an easy level two hit as well. Angel won't be able to push him there. That's a problem. You're dealing with mid lane kind of uh, not being a factor now um, for OMG, which means that he can go into bot side river. I think Wayward very happy to just farm up here towards top side for as long as possible. So the whole magical candy land uh, for OMG, where they get lots of lane leads and they get summoners blown, it's gotten harder now that mid lane cr uh, control has been established from Team WE. I love the creative rooms out from Wayward. I love the way he plays the map. Hey, honestly, Wayward and Adam feel similar, yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah. The, the longer time goes on, the more similarities. I mean, even just the fact that they both pick Darius, but the way that they both love to get out of that top side and gank in the mid lane, it's always so much fun to watch. I love that you bring that up because I was mentioning this to, I was, I was talking to my brother the other day, and I was thinking, you know, we talk about LPL from, from time to time when we've been um, watching on co-streams and stuff. And uh, I feel like Team WE, they're kind of not dissimilar to Team BDS in the LEC, for those of you that watch that region as well, because they also play around, you know, Labrov being that support who plays the Blitzcrank and the roaming supports. You can kind of get out of lane and then get make these miracle plays on big playmakers. I want he's been that. And Wayward tends to play, you know, just 1vx champions and pops out when he needs to, but regardless, just pick something that's so obnoxious to deal with. The Gragas too, to um, kind of make sure that W always have a presence in that top lane, in a side lane somewhere. So Team WE feels like they've, uh, f that's the way that they've overcome the 24 changes. I certainly feel that way. And uh, we could be in for a slow one here, lads. <laughs> I won't lie to you. The uh, the draft has led towards WE really not necessarily wanting that much action. Although, Hung and I Wandy and stay moving over as well. They want to contest this crab and Chalfong. Kicked out of the plate entirely. Ward over from Hung as well. So he's spotted as able. Has to use that ghost to answer stays. It does still feel like control for WE here. Q goes in from Xiaofeng. I don't really know if there's much follow-up available, though. Ah, you can't go into this team. It sucks with the feather pullback. It sucks with the tornado. Hung's off of vision, and they do spot him just now. See with OMG. They really want to fight early game. They have to fight early game. But WE, the fact that they're blowing summoner for summoner instead of, like, just blowing summoners on their own, that's already a win for them. And the longer this game goes on without any action, without OMG finding an opening, the worse it gets for them. Uh-oh. Oh, Abel's forced to flash to the bottom side as well. It's WE burning the summoners of OMG, not the other way around. This is just going so... How did game number one happen the way that it happened? 
And now game number two near perfect from W. Game number three, everything looking fantastic for them. I, I guess it's a jinx stiff. I don't know. I mean, OMG, maybe they just need that champion in this meta. They haven't had another champion that can control the bot side as well as that jinx in game two and three once it's been banned. So W. E. You know, real credit to them for taking that tool off the table and finding ways to allow Wayward and Iwandi to be the players which have um, kind of just shaped the game. Wayward, very early, influencing mid lane. Iwandi, once again, just being a powerhouse on the bot side. You know, he was the only player in the LPL playing this champion last year as well. He played four or five games of it. This year, he hasn't picked it up just yet. Pulls it out in an important moment, and it feels like it's a very impactful pick. He's roaming again. No, it's not the roaming support, but he's there when he's needed. Gives the extra shield and AD to Fofo as he jumps forward for a trade here as well. And OMG, they are playing res uh, retroactively, res uh, responsibly rather. They, they have to uh, kind of just wait to see what WE are doing first. They can't make their own aggressive plays. Wayward <laughs> just walks into the grub pit and he actually gets the oh first one. Sharp on kicked out of the pit. Had Smite available. Doesn't go for it. Wayward just strolls back up to the top lane again. He's very happy with that one. Oh man. I wonder if Sharpung only had the one charge of the Smite because if that's the case, maybe he wanted to go bot side to contest for a dragon afterwards and maybe it wouldn't have been up by the time that was coming through. Maybe that's why he held on to the Smite. He is walking bot side right now but again it's really hard to make plays bot side now especially without a flash on able very hard to go into the feathers in the tornadoes it certainly is and I think honestly the the prior that you get from zion's passive oh, as well so fun. valuable here we go all into the bottom side state flashes the engage and i want to get out the tornado doesn't hit though shout phone plays it beautifully stay trying to continue the fight here as hunk could potentially move over he's peeled off of the drake regardless Oh man, so that's one of your kills. You needed one of them in bot side. Both flashes away from Stay and Iwandi just before level six. Maybe there's an angle here now. Maybe the next time that they uh, show an opening, and flash forward PP God, make something happen. It's the start of something. So we need to be careful now. They need to shield Stay and Iwandi. They can't afford to let this get out of hand. They've done well so far. They're well in the early laning phase. But that's um, a bit of a worrying sign if OMG can get a lead down there. It's the only way they really win this game. Could be an angle in. He got on that Rakan as well. So consistently fantastic on this pick over the years. Could be looking for some of those miracle engages. Can do very well into the Zion. Obviously, Zion, one of these champions, is very good at surviving all ins. The charm that comes out from the quickness can mean that you could potentially get that CC chain and just one shot, and the Zion never gets to get the Feather Storm off. Obviously, it's difficult. <laughs> I'm not saying it's an easy uh, win condition to work with, but. See if PP God can find some angles here as Angel threatened in the mid lane once again as Hung moves in, but Xiaofeng in the area will keep Angel safe. Still, it's Iwandi out on the map first. It's typically a very bad thing for playing as WWE. Yes, they did fall off towards the end of the spring split, but when they were winning, it's Iwandi getting out onto the map like that, which was often the start of very good things. With that first death in mind, it's still Ooh. WWE. Get him the second grub spawn. Well, no, sorry, this is the, the second this is the first lot one of still, them. Yeah. First of them still. <laughs> of course, they stole the early ones. So that's going to be three grubs over to them. Um, it's kind of a luxury, typically, because if you're focusing bot side a lot, that's a big thing. Um, I want to misplace his Q. Um, it's the big thing for him. He flashes after he's already put the Q down, which means he can't just put the Q in his feet. Um, and that means that Xiaofang gets himself a, a bit of a freebie there. Plate's now going up to the side of OMG. And you see that Stay had to blow his ghost as well. So OMG actually opening up towards the bot side. And that means that, you know, with plates going over, Maple's getting himself yep. to be a bit of a threat. We're saying that later into the game, WE's team composition, very hard to dive into. The way you get away from that is by getting a lot of gold. This is something. They already got themselves an early gold lead. Look, it's an open window. And Abel more than happy to dive on in. It's on the Kaiser after all. Um, I don't know what, what Kaiser's stance is on, on burgling, but... Uh, <laughs> But, but honestly, it will be thievery if they manage to get this game with this trap. So I guess burglary seems like the correct uh, way of talking about mm. this one. That was a little replay there off stage, just overstepping slightly, having to use that ghost. Well, no, I think he just misclicked it. You know, he was on his way back to lane, pops ghost, doesn't really get anything for it. So I think it's actually just a misclick from Stay. Um, looking back at it again, I don't really think he was forced in any um, particular manner. Uh, the wave was already on the turret, and Abel and PP God were standing beyond it. He gets much for that point. So either way, playing without the ghost now for a little while. His flash will be up in oh, a minute and a half or so. He does have level six though, which can help. He's alone in river here. He needs to be a little careful. Stay, getting chunked slightly. 
no commitment to the play from OMG. Not, I, I think even though we could see he was alone in river, I'm not sure OMG were aware. And I do think that there's value there in in how you position on the map. You so often see, like the easiest example is Threshers, like lanterning into a brush where there is no jungler, but pretending that your team is there can get a lot of advantages from that style of play. That's true, yes. Um, it's the whole players though your jungler's there. Absolutely, I completely agree with that. That was one of the ways that... Um, it was one of the most annoying things about playing against players. Like, I mean, Flandre used to be like this a little bit, where he would just kind of like walk up and just kind of make a mess of your lane, always play hyper-aggressively. Yes, he would occasionally go 0-5 from that, but you know, when he does end up uh, calling your bluff, you get a lot of advantages for free. On the bot side now, we see that state. Walks up, get himself uh, an evening up with those turret plates. I actually think I won. He was like won the yeah. one, so Stay doesn't get that full <laughs> amount of gold, which means that Stay is not going to be able to get himself to that first item. He gets stopped off for some boots, and then he's building towards Kraken Slayer as opposed to the ship, so it's slightly more expensive in that regards anyway. So, item advantage to Abel right now. I Wandy looking to be the Janna carry this game. Gets himself a solo plate. It's not often you get that as an enchanter support. I think just. Making hay while the sun shines for yeah. him, gets his one moment, and he takes it with both hands. But so far, OMG, over a thousand gold ahead in this one. It does feel like it's a difficult comp to execute on later on into the game. But Static Ship picked up, as you mentioned, and that should lead to advantages across the map. Maybe could lead them to more grubs, evening those grubs up on the second half. <laughs> that was a pixel away. Nice run stuff. Um, so we are seeing the Shiv first coming out of Abel. That's a good cast topside. Bomb was forced for that one. Nice play for Wayward. Very happy with how that trade's going. Beautiful walk away as Iwandi low on HP. The Q lands. Good ultimate out from Iwandi. Keeps himself safe and stay. Punted sideways, but Xiaofeng can't make a stick. Still flash ignite away from Iwandi. The ult gone too, so potentially means that PP God now with his ult and flash can cause something there. Iwandi has to back. He doesn't have any sustain left. One of the good things about playing the Janna is that uh, so you're running Celerity, you get some extra bonus movement speed from your um, from your passive and Zephyr as well, you know, just to hold things in your kit. And then you're also uh, running the Swiftest boost, to be able to get back out of the map more than fine, so I want you can turn up where he needs to be. But still, it's advantage for MG, they get vision control over bot side river first for this dragon. It will be very important to get this one to stop WE getting early dragon stacks. And again, they do have some really big tools to force the engage, particularly with PP God, with Flash and all. I want to be moving at approximately the speed of light currently. Uh, but OMG start off this Drake. Remember, W did manage to get that first one for themselves, which isn't ideal for OMG to be honest, but OMG now will be able to grab that second one off the back of this bot lane lead. That static shift, the lane prior that that gives you. You know, we talked about the Zaya having prior earlier on in the lane, but that shift just completely shifts the matchup. But WE, they want to stack more grubs. They got the first three. Thanks to the efforts of Wayward early on. Now Fofo moving over as well to try and guarantee these. They'll get at least one. That's four in their pockets. OMG here to at least deny the five and six. That's nice for them though. All the same. Uh, if Fofo can ever get on a turret now alone, uh, that tower is going to evaporate. It's one of the big things about this Tristana. Fofo, a good player of the champion, and now he's got himself a good option to um, play the macro potentially as well. No globals this time from OMG to answer against that. One of the big things in game number one was, of course, Angel having the Talia. He's banned away from him in um, later games in the series. He does feel like Fofo, um, without that, those globals to be aware of, can just be very safe playing on his own this game. He can be that solo lane threatening Tristan. Oh, Xiaofeng brings oh, him with him on the twist advance and the ult back onto Angel, but he's ulted into the rest of his team. He's still surviving this play somehow, but finally taken down. Cube next on the chopping block as WE just walk forwards menacingly. Cube actually gets out with his life somehow. His wayward hunting for a little bit more, but Xiaofeng has made his way into Pixel Brush. I mean, he's three levels down on Wayward. I'm not sure that that's a 1v1 he wins against Wayward. And there we go. Wayward <laughs> just... Uh, Passing of ships in the night. I was going to say, you know, it's pretty bad if Wayward's going back to his emote game. He's quite a doubt on that front for a little while, but now he has really come back with a force in that one. But uh, doesn't have that bomb, so he pushes towards that turret. There's that teleport's coming all the same, but still, still on the board for Team WE. And as we said, the longer this game goes on, the worse it kind of feels for OMG to be melee range carries against most of these kind of uh, champions, you know? Once you're playing the Renekton on the top, it's that bruise. They release him, he's trying to get assassination. 
what do you do against, you know, the, the Gragas and the, the Maokai continually locking you up? Cube is very lucky to get out alive. Just about manages to outplay with the slice and dice with the three-man heal just before it. But still, good gold on the board now for WE. Basically closes the gold gap. Well played by Fofo there. Ults away Cube. And the second he ults, flashes forward to get that final auto onto Angel before another round of spells can come out from the way. Obviously, it's setting that ult up so that he can then aggressively flash because... If, uh, if Renekton's still there and you flash into him, you're going to be one shot. No two ways about it. And she's capitalized. One and one on the scoreboard here is WE. Feel like the team with the advantage compositionally. They've closed the goal gap that OMG had to start this game off. And now they start off Herald. And they have really strong first items as well. Crack and Slur are both ready. Carry is a really good point of power for both of them. No huge tank items on the other side, nor is it likely for there to be those at any point in this game. So both these AD carries are going to be doing a lot of work. Kaiser roaming up towards the river. Stay hasn't managed to back after getting that first tower, so it doesn't have as all that gold spent just now. OMG, I don't know whether they can get themselves a fight. They forced the all out of Stay nonetheless. Stay is really low as they move up towards this top side. Herald taken by WE. They oh, the four man hurricane comes on through. And it will be a kill onto Wayward. They find one in answer for the Herald. That's just one kill for that Herald, though. It's not even like in the grand scheme of things they get that much. They lose that turret in the bot side of the map. First turret went towards Stay as Abel couldn't defend that in a 1v2. That's uh, not the best thing for MG. Foco might find an answer towards this top side as well. Oh, is Angel gonna die here? He doesn't have flash available. Fofo literally just 1v1s him. Cube now trying to get onto the mid lane to answer no ultimate for Fofo. There's just not enough damage there for Cube. Nice punish here from WE's mid. Yeah, OMG, they're just letting WE slip off a of vision a little bit too much. OMG, they're not really getting themselves into great positions. I think you can tell they're a little bit panicked by this early game. The plays they're making are kind of snatch and grab. They're not that <laughs> clean. You know, it's a good cue from Xiaobang, forces the all out for free, but that means he's not there to force a fight towards this Herald. But, uh, it gets harder to get yourself a really big kind of play. You see the double disengage from W makes it so much harder to reach the target. They have to commit the flash and the ult from PP God, which is something which is a very important set of tools for him to use. He won't have that again for a little while now. WE walk back with a really scary Gragas at this point still. Even after that death, he's very happy to walk up like this. He shows no fear. No, he does not. It's exactly what we saw from him on the Rex Sign game number two as well. Leaving <laughs> the solo lanes and trying to make plays happen. Able doesn't get knocked back in quite the right direction this time as Howling Gale flies on through as well. And the Herald will be taken up towards this top side Summoner's Drift. No. Wait. no. Wait. Where are we going, lads? He's driving around the block. Um, he's coming back for an engage, maybe. Nope. It's just that. He, but he why? Just, look, sometimes you just got to drive. You, you play your head, you put the Orcs cord on, and you put on your playlist, and you think, this is good. No, Orcs is an LCK now. Shush. Quiet. Stop. Deceased. <laughs> My man's never heard of Bluetooth. <laughs> Here we go, Q. Trying for an all in on the top side, but Fofo just out damages him. Fofo just rinses Angel, and now he's rinsed Cube as well. He is destroying everyone in the side lane. What is Cube? Thinking he doesn't have himself burst and wayward. I think he might be even fine on this boss side. He has flash and E. He might be able to get out here, and indeed he's out for the first bit. Smiling Despair does a good amount of damage. He is damn tanky. PP got trying to get underneath the tower. There's the knockup. And they do finish a kill. Crucial for OMG because Fofo has taken over the top side. Yeah, and with the grub buff as well on the top side, WE, they're going to get themselves an inner tower. And OMG, they are just behind WE's macro. They have been falling apart ever since Wayward and I won. They are buying so much time presence on the map. And of course, this time, Fofo being such a presence on the Tristana. Strongest individual solo laner, strongest member on the map of any team, actually. You can't fight this guy. He takes an inner turret, even more gold over to him. So, OMG, who needed the early game gold lead and to things to go their way, they have gotten over aggressive, they've over forced, they've gone into Fofo, who now has an Avori Quick Blades, which has been uh, buffed up on this patch too, an extra 5 AD. And it really feels like that OMG. Uh, they panicked too much in this early game, and it feels like this game might be falling away from them now. It gets much harder into the late game, as it gets so hard to go melee range of this WE team composition. And it's not like Stay can't carry either. Like, let's say the miracle scenario happens where you do it's kill Fofo. Yep. How are you killing Stay as well? Like, Zaya's going to be basically impossible to get on top of. I really struggle to see the scenario where OMG can win some of these late game fights. Angel finishes off a Leandri's. Perhaps a way 
to start melting through Wayward and Hung will be on that front line who will be so hard to burn through but my goodness this just feels like an absolute masterclass from WE once again two games in a row basically and OMG I mean game one was great but where is that team that people have been getting so excited about this year um I think it uh, left us in the early game. OMG, they tried one or two aggressive players, but as soon as things started falling apart, this team has looked very, very toothless. I I really want them to revisit things in draft, um, and in terms of their early game pathing as well. I think that Xiaofeng and Farouk, well, as soon as the Kaiser Rakan came in as 1-2, it felt like OMG, they didn't have like an out from that draft. As soon as the Jarn was locked in, it felt like, well, we've got to dive into the big disengaged team now. Good luck with that. And they didn't have an answer in the back half of the draft. It's been a big issue from them. They don't have ways to start fights very well. You can see that they're heading towards the top side of the map, trying to get some vision control. But while this is happening, we are collapsing themselves way with onto the top side of the map too. Ooh, some good damage on to stay there. See Abel leaning towards that AP variant of the Kaiser. Not going for the like pure AP build, but going for that shiv into Rage Blade into probably a whole bunch of AP now at this point. So essentially deciding we can't dive anymore. That's not how our composition is going to function. We're going to try and play for the poke. I don't know if it works against a Janna though. That's the problem, because if you get enough poke, Janna roll. It's a load of sustain. You have a redemption on Janna as well. It wouldn't surprise me if there's an ingenious hunter for I1D2 um, in terms of those runes, which means that the redemption goes onto lower cooldown. So you have double AP carries now in Angel and Abel which means that you're going into, uh, you've got a lot of magic damage poke, but right now, uh, kind of like once you get towards the third item, that's the only time where this, it feels like this Kaiser could potentially be a poke bot. After that, it gets a lot difficult, I feel like, beyond that point. WE, you know, very much in control of this game. Yes, I know it's only a 1,000 gold lead at the top of the scoreboard. OMG still have the same problem, regardless of that gold lead, though, and how you know small it could be compared to other gold leads we've seen in the LPL they're split they're still gonna have a massively hard time trying to get on top of these carries from WE the one thing I will say is WE are gonna have to be decisive when it comes to uh, these neutral <laughs> I guess Sharpon wants to get the shield on Abel that's what we're, we're gonna say on that one um, they are gonna have to be decisive when it comes to these neutral objectives right because playing against the AP Kaiser and the Huey like even with a Janna that is a lot of, of poke damage that is going to whittle away and you've got two reasonably short range AD carries out. Obviously Tristana does scale and range throughout the game, but um, the Zaya especially will struggle into, I mean, that's where the, the matchup shifted, right? It used to be kind of Zaya favored and then AP Kaiser became the answer to the Zaya where a Zaya just can't survive these fights if you do get hit by the poke. Yeah. It does feel like WE though, if they are decisive, if they just get onto these objectives and, and do, start things off feels like it's going to be quite hard to get any significant remember, poke in time do you remember poke poke zaya the lethality zaya do you remember that oh yeah that was that was that was pretty horrific oh gee i feel like we're getting peepee gone uh, just get shredded yeah he's just kicked out that could honestly be a barren opportunity or at least you can make them fight you at this point stay now starting to get chunked by these w's Hung dodges it, so it hits Fofo instead. <laughs> Hung betraying his mid laner here. But Drake spawning onto the map in 25 seconds time. WE not looking towards that Baron. They want to make sure that there is no opportunity for OMG to trade a Baron for potentially Soul. And you see that Angel heading towards topside, wave clearing through there. I mean, I think OMG, they don't really have a choice but to just play things slow. They don't want to force a drag themselves. They can't right now. They have to walk to Wayward. And Wayward is chunky. He's, um, oh, yeah. It's really strong. The thing is, though, um, Gragas, it's debatable whether he has a drinking problem. It's not debatable that his drink is causing problems. OMG is, uh, they got to get through him. That's tough. Yeah. And the thing is, he has so much to stake here himself. Here we go. Great little engage on to PP God. PP God, using the quickness defensively is a disaster for OMG. It's too easy. Wayward just walks at them and stands there and says, what are you going to do about but, it? Like, how do you get through this fat man, dude? This guy's just, this guy is not all fat. He's all tank. You just don't get through him. WE, after blowing that aggressive tool, it feels like they can be a little bit more decisive again in how they play around these waves. Do they really want to go towards the Baron themselves? It feels like they're playing it out maybe a little slowly now. I wonder if they could just bait towards that Baron and see what they could blow from OMG. They have shields from the Janna, or they have the ult from Janna too. It feels like they could be pushing this tempo just a little further, which is allowing OMG to kind of sit there and 
potentially scale into the game with their own carries. That's my one worry from Team W right now. The one thing I will say as well is like we saw for a few seconds there, where he would have gone back to base, and there were four players from WE without that Gragas in front of them. And yeah. suddenly the poke starts to feel like it's hitting. You know, the, the damage yeah. out from Angel and from Abel really, really chunking out the health bar. So you know, if WE miss position on the map, there are definitely angles to punish. And the second you do get that angle with Abel being able to fly in, you can just one-shot people. Mm. It's going to be down to Iwandi protecting everyone and trying to keep that working. It's the um, uh, the WE at 99% of their power is just Gragas, and then the rest of the team is to have W at 100 It feels a little unfair. <laughs> Spoko is actually really strong, but it feels like that when you go towards these team fights because, um, yeah, I think it's been a really good punish from WE in terms of the draft itself, saying, okay, how do you get past the Gragas as this front line late, pick later into the draft? The Jana as well, very much helping with that. You know, we're in a game which is the thousand gold, and uh, between it, uh, 25 minutes, not that large lead, but it still feels like it is a very difficult position for OMG. I think you can understand why OMG have slowed down the game in regards to that now, because they think that, look, we can't for once just throw ourselves into the fray and play with the pile on, just play for the big, big fights. They need to wait until they have items feels like they're just going to be so, so slow in coming. They're getting towards three items soon. That's when you're going to get, you know, Void Staff or Crippling from Angel. Abel's going to get himself a Nash's Tooth as well. But is that going to be enough? It really feels quite difficult all the same. Ofo found PP God on the flank there. Will deny a bit of vision here. Will just maintain control on the bottom side of the player's wayward. Continues to walk on forwards. Xiaofeng won't be wanting Fofo. Fofo's not with WE. I don't know if this is the fight they want. Cube, pretty tanky at this point. Everyone diving in with the Monsoon. Oh no, Xiao Xiaofeng drops his no! It could have been the opportunity and it ends in tears for OMG. The rookie jungler for OMG. Oh, here goes Abel. Abel wants to make it happen himself, tries to get into the back line, but he's just 1v3 wayward. Oh, he survived somehow. No, burned down in the end. I'm not even sure where the damage came from. Was that a red buff? I guess it was a red buff. It would have been the global red buff from RMG, but all the same, wayward dies, but it's three from RMG that hit the floor first. RMG, it looked like they had one final fight where they could manage to get that opportunity to kill some important members of WE, but they can't get it done cleanly. Baron's the side of WE on four members and a good amount of gold in pocket. I would imagine they could go towards, potentially towards the dragon after this too, or at least kind of um, go set up for the next spawn of it. Great cast coming in from Wayward. Fantastic from Hung as well to just uh, throw that ultimate across the team. See how uh, difficult it is for Cube to get in towards melee range, but this is the big moment here. Xiaofeng flashes Q before the flash throws. It comes from his starting point, not after the point where he flashes. Fortunate moment for him. Looks like Angel was uh, caught out a little bit cheaply after that point, but it really is this Lee Sin. It's harder to play into the late game, just can't quite get it done. And Abel, um, we've known a Kaiser or two for OMG to fly in and make a bit of a mistake. This yeah. one's very lucky to get one down, but still, bad plays I mean, all apart from OMG. So close, so close to finishing off state, but unfortunately the damage just not quite there. About 100 away from getting the kill on his opposite member. The fact he's able to get away with it all is like a bit of a miracle, honestly, for OMG in that play. But I don't think it matters in the grand scheme of things. Is WE now just start the siege? And again, it's so difficult to engage onto this composition. Compositions with this much engage, uh, disengage are so good at sieging, and not to mention a double AD carry. How do you stop WE just destroying your base brick by brick? Ah, uh, this is... Um one which I think the architects can solve. The foundations of this house are not looking particularly solid. OMG, they do have three items onto Abel. That's that's okay. I mean, that's good. You get the you know the W poke is going to hurt even more, and you're going to have yourself even more damage when you start actually getting through the Rage Blade. Nash's tooth drops as well with the passive. How much are you realistically going to do though? Good cues, good disengage, great bomb. Oh, beautifully done from WE. Feels like OMG are the three little piggies right now, and this house made a straw. WE, they know how to blow. And they are blowing this map wide open. I mean, they've got literally Wind Woman on the team. <laughs> Their super strength is destroying straw at this point. Walking this one in. I mean, it's just beautiful to see from WE. Fofo, by the way, has literally every single kill for WE. Yeah. He is 7-0-0 zero, zero of the Tristana. This is like 
one of the best games of his entire career, I'm pretty sure. And, um, I mean, we saw a great game from Angel on the other side coming from these mid lane champion uh, players as well earlier in the series from OMG's win. Um, both of these mid laners have struggled to find themselves a bit of a home in the game. They've been between teams multiple times, because, like, you know, Angel and Fofo both have been hopping between, kind of wandering Ronin. And, so uh, good. That's such a good ball back into the team, but Fofo gets the kill with the bomb on the tower. I didn't even realize that. There we pop. <laughs> It really does feel like Fofo, it's been a really big game for him. Both of these yep. mid laners just trying to find a bit more of a stable home in the LPL. And on top of that, like, replacing Shanks, who was the franchise player for WE, he was the guy that replaced Teachamar, he was the guy that kind of developed this new identity for the team. Tongue just takes a chunk, but he'll be okay. And it feels like Fofo had a lot of work on his shoulders to try and replace a name like that within an organization. But so far in this series, it feels like he's absolutely making it happen. Oh, Wayward 2 on the top side as Cube barely survives the play. The tower will be whittled away. PP God, I mean, he's desperately trying to find something, but there's just nothing to find. Even if you get a five-man knockup, can anyone follow up? All the hard work which they just did, 400 heal onto every single member from the Redemption as well. John are all still available. They can't do anything. This is obnoxious. This is horrendous to have to play against Wayward. Has so much sustain as well in of his own. The Monsoon comes through and look at that full health bars basically across the team. It's only Hung and Wayward that are chunked. And the towers will fall. WE unstoppable with this composition. Not quite as quick clean as the last game, but still about as clean as you could ask for. Absolutely beautiful stuff. And they are toying with OMG as they finish this third game. What an insane game from WE. And in particular, what an insane recognition in draft that they could checkmate OMG very, very early on. Very early journal lock in. The Kragas later on as well became such an issue. And the way that they played through the picks beyond that point really made things so difficult for OMG. I mean, Wayward goes into mid lane to make sure that there was nothing left in terms of an early kind of option for Xiaofeng to go towards mid lane. Bot lane. What do you do as Rakan versus the Janna? They get one kill luckily down there, but it's not enough to flip the game. OMG, they need to be so careful in the draft right now to not show their hands so early, because this felt unplayable. It really did. This felt basically impossible. Yeah, you got a couple of kills earlier. That was like the, the small sliver of hope, but that was literally all they had. And, you know, hope's not even in this matchup anymore. Uh, we're going to jump to a quick break, and then WE honestly looking like maybe a 3-1 after the break. I really hope, though, we get more from OMG. We need to see more right after.